This is what I think of bike alarms. In the shit pile. <laughs> Uh, right, it's a Yamaha Thundercat. I don't know what year it is. I don't know what CC it is. Um, customers asked us to get it going. It's been laid up for a while. So it's probably fuel in the carbs has gone off. Um, jet's blocked. But, as you can see, it has had an alarm. Badly fitted. We haven't got a key fob for it, so we need to get hold of the customer before I start taking anything out of it. Because it something unusual on it. Turn the ignition on, you should have an oil lamp but when you press the start button the oil lamp comes on so it could be the fact that it needs the key fob to fire it over I could disconnect all the alarm um, if he wants it taken off but we need to get hold of him first but I've got to take all the side panels off and tank off anyway to do the carbs so crack on with that for the moment yeah? cool so when a bike's been laid up the first thing that normally would go wrong normally it's fuel yeah, they get fuel left in the carburetors and it just blocks the primary jets and they won't start. So if you're going to lay your bike up for a while, what's the best way to avoid this happening? Run it out of fuel completely. Probably drain the tank as well. Because the fuel goes stale so quickly nowadays. And then um, fill it all up when you start it again and it should be fine really. A bit like people putting their lawnmowers away at winter. They just don't start because they leave fuel in the carbs. Basically, petrol comes from oil, basically it reverts back to oil, it just blocks all the little tiny oh, okay. jets up. Well, it kind of separates? No, it, it, I suppose the flammable ingredient in it dissolves, and then you're just left with the goo that's the rest of it, you know. Strange. What's that? You've got a fuel tap there, but when the tank's on, you can't actually reach it. So it makes me wonder if it's got the wrong fuel tap on it. Right, okay. That's a drain overflow. That's a fuel pump. So it could be the fuel, even the fuel pump's wired in. That should. Yeah, fuel pump should wind, so we can get on with stripping the air filter out. You, you, all of these alarms are all good, but they cause more normally more problems than anything else. Why would the alarms cause problems? They drain batteries. They're all wired in. They're all, all of them are wired in differently. You can get very basic ones, or you can get complicated ones. And this one's obviously quite complicated. We're all looking at all that lot. I've never understood people who do wiring and just make it messy. It's it's not hard. There's no need for it, is there? What's not hard? Bit of tubing, a few a few clips. Yeah. Yeah, it's all been apart before. The cable ties around those. They shouldn't be cable tied. They should be proper clips. Get the air box out. So how's that work? This just a voltmeter and then you can tell if you're getting power to the coils or not. Ignition on, bike on run. Right, so you're getting voltage there. So I would say there is nothing wrong with the electrical side of it. So it's just process elimination and you've eliminated one process? Yeah. That's the wiring for your throttle position sensor. Right, the liquid cooled as well. And that should be a return pipe, which it is. That's fuel in. Get rid of that. Choked working. This is what I think of bike alarms. In the shit pile. So that's those. They'll all be for diagnostic pickups. This is why I hate alarms. Look, that's bare. That could chafe through and hit that and short out or anything, you know? Hmm. 
And we know, see, that's the original wire to the fuel pump there, that blue and black. And that's where we spliced it. So it's come out of that, like I say, gone up to the relay to tell it to shut out the fuel pump or not. So you cut those two off and rejoin them there. That's the worst of it out then. Right, that's that one done. Fuel pump's working, which it wasn't before. So we'll get the carbs sorted out. But it was the fuel pump not working, wasn't it? So now we've got them apart, I might as well clean them out anyway. Right, so what I normally do is find that silly little screwdriver, right? Which I'll probably put under there. These are your mixture screws there in those holes. So screw them all the way in and count how many turns. So you've got half, one, one and a quarter basically. A quarter, half, one. See if they're somewhere near each other, you know? Mm -hmm. Half, one, one and a quarter, quarter, half, one. Yeah, they're all about right, aren't they? It looks like it. Right, and now pop the bowls off and have a look what the jets are like. And there lies your problem. See all that gunk in there? Mm. That was once petrol. Sometimes when these have been sitting they get fuel ingress in them and then your float level's messed up. So this is because it's been sitting there yeah. <coughs> idle? Yeah. They're going to have to come out and be cleaned. Actually, the rubbers normally go on them, you're better off cleaning them out. So let's get the mains out. It's very unusual for a main jet to block because of the size of the hole. Okay. But the primary is down in there. no hole at all so you try blowing them out also you need to take that out because that's what we call an emulsion tube and it's got little holes all the way around the side of it see all those all blocked up look mm. there's little tiny holes there yeah they've all got to be clear so we'll take that all apart on each carb and then we can blow all the carbs out Hopefully getting rid of all the rubbish that's in there. You've got a diaphragm in the top there and that vacuum opens that up as you accelerate. But you want to get an airline in all these and blow all the holes out as well. Try and clear all our jets up. So you get a wire brush. Ruin the wire brush. That'll give you something nice and small to poke all these out. Choke, 
explain what happened there, Ash? Well, it's running, look. That's on zero for three seconds, then it goes up to number eight. Then actually current revs, then it drops back down to zero. Then it goes up to eight. So that's the process of it self-diagnosing itself in the computer. Okay. So the government online number eight reads is the fuel saving warning light, which is probably because you've got the tank off. There goes. So we'll, we'll balance the carbs to make sure they're right. And then we'll pop the tank and all the air box and everything back on. And then that should clear that? Should clear that code, yeah. So what's a carburetor synchronizer then? As I said to you before, it's um, how much air each carburetor is drawing in individually. So you put all this on, and then all of those gauges should read within basically two two bars of each other. But the closer you can get it, the better it'll be. And then the adjustments are done by those screws? Yeah. You balance that one and that one against each other with that screw there. Then you balance that one and that one against each other with that screw in there. Then you balance that set against that set with that screw in the middle. Okay. Fuel's on. Very slightly out. Reader, then, it? Yeah. Right. Another day in paradise, eh? It's a good job. Next week on the workshop. That's the plate that was on the front mud guard. So it was built, rebuilt in America in 1948. Phoenix, Arizona.